life. Do you love the people in your life? Are the people in your life adding value to your life? And I think it's a really important question because out of the four things that make up a superb life, being healthy, fit and strong, having a career or business that you love, being financially free and having great people in your life, that last bit is a little bit out of our control. Uh, we can't decide what other people are going to do. We can't force people to treat us a certain way. We can't force people to respect us. Uh, but do we get to choose who we have in our life? And do we get to choose what we accept or won't accept from other people's behavior? And I think it's a really important question because we live in a world where it seems uh, we've become very accepting of nasty, negative, gossiping, criticizing people uh, like it's become normal. And I'm not sure why. Uh, I don't want those kind of people in my life. How about you? I want to live a life where the people in my life are respectful of themselves, which means they would be respectful of me. And because I can't control what other people do, I always ask myself these personal questions. Am I living my life in a way that I'm proud of so that if I had nobody in my life, I would still be a very happy person. I wouldn't be lonely. Uh, I, I love being with me. And there's a really interesting group of letters that uh, I live my life by when it comes to relationships with myself and with other people. And it's uh, an acronym, a root. So if you want to have great people in your life, a root. <laughs> if you want to be a great person and have a great relationship with yourself, a root. A R A U T. A R A U T. And I'm singing it because. I'd love you to remember it because if you, if you apply this to your life, your own personal relationship with yourself and, a, and use it as a, a standard for how you want people to treat you, I think life could be better. Now, is it a foolproof plan? Of course not. Will, will nasty people still sneak into your life? Yes. Uh, is it possible that you could still have challenges with your, your relationship with yourself? Yes. But this could be very helpful. So A-R-A-U-T stands for Acknowledgement. Respect, understanding, acceptance, and touch. Acknowledgement, respect, acceptance, understanding, and touch. I think I got that right, a root. So acknowledgement, respect, understanding, acceptance, and touch are the fundamentals, according to the psychologists and behavioral scientists, of what love actually is. If you were to break down what a great movie, Love Actually. If you were to break down the, the, the components of a love relationship, it's been suggested that this, these words are what makes up a great relationship, a love relationship with yourself or with other people. So I'll start with acknowledgement because obviously if you meet somebody for the first time, you need to acknowledge that they're there. So that's eye contact, open body language, lean forward, and just be involved in the conversation. That's called a great communication technique. I'll flip that on its backside. If I ask for your name and I don't use it and I call you by somebody else's name, obviously we'd have a breakdown of our relationship really quickly. If I'm in a relationship with you and I start calling you by somebody else's name, or even worse, if, if I'm in a, an intimate relationship with somebody and I start calling them by somebody else's name, is it possible that we could have a serious challenge? So acknowledgement is a, is a really important part of all relationships. So whether you meet somebody for the first time or whether this is somebody that you've had a relationship for, for many, many years, and I'm very privileged, I've been married for nearly 30 years and I have a, a gorgeous husband and I think the reason our relationship works so incredibly well is we're both really aware of a root. And I'm con consciously thinking about it on a regular basis, on a day-to-day -day basis. So am I acknowledging my husband? Am I acknowledging the people in my life for what they do for me, how they treat me? Uh, am I appreciative of them? And that's all, all a part of acknowledgement from, yes, leaning forward, maintaining eye contact, by the way. say hello, big smile and say hello. Uh, I think it's sad that in some personal relationships uh, that gets lost because uh, that's just my partner so if I'm in a bad mood I, I don't smile and I don't say hello and I'll just use it as a very personal thing that came in and I do every day. 
The very first thing we do in the morning when we wake up is say, I love you. Uh, it's an acknowledgement of our relationship. I love you. Then we always say what we're thankful for and what we're looking forward to. Uh, and it's an, to me, that's an acknowledgement of our life. So here's the great question. In all of your relationships, are you acknowledging that you have that person in your life? Are you using their name? And are you making them feel special because they're a part of your life? There's a, there's a great place to start. And if you use, use that with yourself, are you acknowledging that you're a great person? Are you proud of who you are? Do you uh, celebrate your wins? Do you celebrate your success? Are you nice to yourself? Do you acknowledge that you are a great person? And could that be a great place to start in a relationship with yourself? So then if I go with respect, I think for me, this is the ultimate word for a great world. If I respect myself, if I respect you, if I respect all other people for whatever ever differences we have, and I respect my environment, couldn't the world be a much better place? So if I respect you regardless, and it's a, it's a complicated thing, I get that, because uh, how do we respect somebody that's that's a criminal, for example? Or how do we respect somebody that treats animals badly? I would find that very hard. Or how do I respect somebody that treats humans badly? I find that really hard. But I can't expect somebody to treat me with respect if I don't treat them with respect. So what I'm always aiming to do, and this is just a, a, a personal thing for me, is I try and look at each situation from the other person's point of view. And that's very difficult because I'm not the other person. But regardless of what, what somebody does or how they treat other people or even people that treat animals badly, and I find this is the hardest one for me because uh, for me that's just, you know, how could you do that? But I always aim to look at why did that happen? Why is that person that kind of a person? I'm always looking for a way to build a relationship and understanding of why people are the way they are. Because if you don't do that, is it possible that you could go crazy? Because it doesn't make any sense what people do. So acknowledgement, respect, respect for yourself, respect for other people and respect for the environment. Could that create a, a better world? Wow. <laughs> uh, the acceptance and understanding are really interesting it doesn't matter which way you put them around because the word the word still works a uh, root uh, have you ever heard this expression I would love you if or I would love you more if or we could have a better relationship if you changed and of course that is a non-acceptance of that person and often in relationships, I find it interesting because particularly with women, I don't know about how a man's headspace works, but a lot of women have shared this with me, that they meet somebody and that it would be a great relationship when I change the person. So when I make them better, when I fix them, when I change them, they will be better, which of course is a, is a non-acceptance of who they are at the moment. And how can we expect people to accept who we are if we don't accept who they are? Uh, I, I hear this a lot because I've been an exercise professional all of my life. I will like myself more if I lose weight. Is that an acceptance of yourself? And then if you add to that, when somebody else says to you, I'll love you more if you lose weight. <laughs> uh, love me how I am or don't love me at all. But to love me con conditionally, and that's probably the acceptance thing, is it's to love you unconditionally. And that's what I love about puppy dog love, of course, because my dogs don't care whether I've had a shower or not. They don't care whether I'm fat or skinny. They don't care whether I've got wrinkles or, or I'm young. Dogs just love us unconditionally, and that's what I love the most about animals, and I love my dogs for that. They just love me, uh, which is the perfect example for me of acceptance. So just in your headspace, your relationship with yourself, your relationship with other people, do you acknowledge them for who they are? Do you respect them for who they are? Do you accept them for who they are? And then there's really an interesting thing called understanding. And something that for me is the ultimate communication tool, and I learnt this communication tool the hard way. Uh, if I say to you I understand how you feel, it's been suggested that that is very disrespectful and you actually don't. Even if you've been in a situation that is seemingly identical to somebody else, you still can't say I understand how you feel. And the reason for that, explained to me by the behavioural scientists and the psychologists, is that I'm not you and I don't understand exactly what you're going through. So just through a change of uh, communication skill here or, or technique, 
is rather than saying, I understand how you feel, the suggestion is, I don't understand how you feel, but I want to. I've been through something similar, so I might have a slight understanding, but what you're going through, I'm not you, and I would love to hear how you feel. And the communication there is, it's not about me, it's about you. So please explain. Now, whether this is a relationship with your boss, with your kids, with your partner, with your next door neighbor, with a complete stranger that you're just having a random conversation with, rather than saying, I understand how you feel or I understand you, which we, we just can't. It's like a woman saying, I understand how a man's brain works or vice versa. That would just be silliness, wouldn't it? <laughs> so how about this? I don't understand. So if you're having a fight with your partner, and I hope that you don't, because what a horrible way to live. But if you are if you are having an argument with somebody, rather than getting into the, how about this? I don't understand. I'm the mother, you're the daughter. I'm a wife, you're the husband. I'm a bloke, you're a woman. I don't understand, but I want to, because I love you or I care about you or you're important to me. So I'm gonna shut up and listen, because I want to understand where you're coming from. Uh, and I always share this example and the reason why this is so important to me and w where this study came from, this study of communication with myself and with other people. Uh, my father died of Alzheimer's and I had a, a client or a member at one of my health clubs who became a personal exercise coaching client. And she shared with me that her mother had died of Alzheimer's. And I said stupidly, I completely understand how you feel, my father died of Alzheimer's. And she just nailed me. And I'm so appreciative that she nailed me. She said, how do you know how I feel, you stupid woman? The relationship between a mother and a daughter is completely different to a father and a daughter. So don't pretend that you know how I feel. And she was exactly right. And I really appreciated that she nailed me. And I've been really aware of using those words ever since. And that's how this study of communication came about. Because I talked to the behavioral scientists about that particular statement. I understand how you feel. So acknowledge how people are, acknowledge who they are, acknowledge them for what they are, respect them, accept them, and then don't try and understand them. Just listen. I want to understand because I care about you. I will never be able to understand because I'm not you, but I really, I am here and I want to listen. And I think that's a beautiful way to build great relationships. A great way to build a relationship with yourself. I don't understand why I did that, so let's analyse it so that you do have an understanding of yourself. And I'll ask that great question, do you every day, and I'll rephrase, after every conversation I have with myself and every conversation I have with other people, I always analyse it. Could I have been more, shown more acknowledgement, more respect, more understanding, more acceptance? Could I have done that better? And I think if we live in a headspace of wanting to get better at communication and wanting to have better relationships with people, that we might actually get better at it rather than thinking, oh, I'm really good at communication or I'm really good at relationships. I'm not. And I've been studying this in depth for that conversation with the lady in the health club would have been 35 years ago. And I'm still studying communication every day and I still screw it up on a regular basis. So I love learning every day. How about you? And may we all learn to get better at communication because wouldn't the world be a better place? The last one, of course, is touch. And whether that's physical or emotional touch, but the human body needs to be touched. Now, not touched by everybody, because a lot of exercise professionals will share with me, oh, Rowie, my clients don't like me to touch them. Uh, that might be true. Your clients might not like you to touch them, but that doesn't mean they don't like to be touched. It just means they don't want you to touch them. We all need to be touched physically. We all need physical contact. Uh, one of the interesting side notes of that is, uh, is the intimate relationship that you have with another human being. If you have a sexual relationship with somebody, uh, that's a touching relationship. How would they know how to touch you effectively if you don't share with them how to do that effectively? And maybe that means you have to be able to touch yourself effectively. I know that's a controversial topic, but I think it's really important because this, our sexual relationships are things that get screwed up on a regular basis. Is it possible they get screwed up because we don't have a good sexual relationship with ourselves and then we don't know how to share with other people what we like, what we don't like, what we, what we accept, what we won't accept? The touch part of the world is really important. 
cuddles and kisses and handshakes and massages and and just human connection by physical touch is so important so if i if we analyze that carefully in any relationship you're in at the moment uh, if somebody starts calling you by somebody else's name how would that make you feel if you do something beautiful for somebody and they don't acknowledge that you did it how would it make you feel if you don't feel respected by another human being, how does that make you feel? Do you want to have a relationship with somebody that doesn't respect you? I hope the answer is no. If somebody isn't accepting of you for every part of you and they're trying to change you, how would that, how would that make you feel? If people think they understand you and they just tell you how you should be doing stuff without listening to your point of view, I completely understand how you feel versus I don't understand but I want to because I care about you. And if the people in your life don't want to touch you, or I'll rephrase that, if you, were, if you are in a relationship with another human being and they stop touching you, what's happened to the relationship? You've got partners that live together, are married, have a beautiful intimate relationship and one of the, one of the people in the relationship stop, stops touching the other person, what's happened to the relationship? So I'm asking very personally and these are all very controversial, tough topics to talk about. But Romax is all about being healthy, fit and strong, physically and mentally, emotionally, having a career or business that you love, being financially free and being able to share all of that with great people. And if you've got great people in your life but you're not acknowledging, acknowledging them, not respecting them, you don't accept them as they are, you don't, you don't aim to understand where they're coming from and there isn't a physical touch in your relationship, how can that part of living your life to the max even work? So I've just asked some simple questions about how you look after you, how you look after other people. And ultimately, isn't our most important relationship the one that we have with ourselves? And I always use the example, if you're on a plane, if you haven't been on one lately, I'll remind you, they will share, in, a, in the rare case of an emergency, a mask will fall out of the ceiling, make sure that you're breathing first before you try and help your kids or your family or the other people on the plane to breathe, because if you're not breathing and you're dead, then you can't help other people. So my question is always this, the relationship that you have with yourself. Are you acknowledging yourself? Do you respect yourself? Do you uh, uh, acknowledge yourself? Do you respect, respect yourself? Do you accept you? Or are you constantly trying to change you? And it's an interesting question because I'm always aiming to get better. I'm always aiming to get better every single day. But I love who I am, and this is my favorite expression for this. I love who I am, and I'm excited about who I am becoming. Not I don't like who I am now, so I have to get better. I love who I am now, and I'm excited about who I am becoming. And could that be a really special way to live, the relationship that you have with yourself? Now, if you're constantly doing that with yourself, I love who I am now, and I'm aiming to become Oh, well, I'm excited about who I'm becoming every day, is it possible that you would add more value to any relationship? Because is it possible that a relationship becomes very ordinary if you don't like who you are? If you need to be uh, built up, if you need to be complimented, if you need somebody to be constantly telling you how wonderful you are because you don't like who you are, could that be part of a, a relationship or the reason why relationships break down? Because we don't like who we are. So I'll go back to the plane analogy. The plane analogy, woohoo! You have to look after you first. How can you have a great relationship with other people if you don't have a great relationship with yourself? So I'll ask again, are you acknowledging how awesome you are every day? Do you respect yourself? Do you accept who you are and be, are you excited about who you are becoming? Do you understand where your, wh how your life is? Why is it here the way it's become now? And are you understanding of how it could get better? And touch, beautiful touch. <laughs> Do you touch yourself physically and emotionally every day? Because that could be a really great way to build a great relationship with yourself. What a cool thing to do. May you be living your life to the max. My name's Rowie. Thank you, com thank you for coming to Romax and thank you for sharing this absolutely magnificent day with me. We've still got snow on the mountains, the sun is shining, the birds are singing, the bees are buzzing, the planes are flying and life is amazing. Please live your life to the max because you've got a great relationship with you and a great relationship with all the other people in your life. Woohoo! I feel good. No, 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 no. I knew that. I would now. Woohoo!